Um, can you talk a little bit about how you develop um, your stories? You know, your storyboarding process. Storyboarding. Okay. And my process is thinking, thinking, and thinking, thinking about my stories for a long time. If you have a better way, please let me know. When I, I visit him, I'm always amazed because um, we work so hard at Pixar on, we have a storyboard a team and we work very closely we'll work and rework and rework our sequences I go over to sit and watch him and he sits down at his desk starts and just storyboards everything himself and these boards are so beautiful and they actually you know um, it becomes the layout for his films and it just comes out of his his head and it always amazes me That's not really a question. I guess I'm just sort of, <laughs> I'm gushing because I'm sitting next to Hayao Miyazaki. I think working on a storyboard alone uh, is a custom that we have in Japan in terms of animation. It's not, it's not just I that works uh, that way, uh, but since I'm slow, it seems like I'm working on the storyboard all the time. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea for Ponyo? What was the inspiration for Ponyo? Ponyo was, ah, we just saw a story about a frog, uh, but uh, the first idea I had for Ponyo was that uh, the little boy uh, uh, picks up a frog. But I couldn't work out a good character for a frog, so I turned it into a goldfish. I think it's, uh, I was lucky, I was, it was good that I turned it into a goldfish. The, the color in your, um, in all your films are so beautiful because it really helps tell the underlying emotion of your scenes. This film, I think, is one of the most colorful films you've created. Um, was there... What was the idea behind the, the styling, you know, the backgrounds and the color styling for this film? to make it a simple story and to show simplicity uh, through the colors. Also, uh, since uh, the main character is red, as a, a goldfish, I, don't want, I didn't want her color to overwhelm the other colors, so the other colors had to uh, be brightened as well. The, the music in your films, um, you know, the, the amazing work in all your films with Joe Hishashi has done such an incredible job on your films. And, how do you, how early do you bring him in on the process? I bring uh, Mr. Hisaishi in uh, to discuss what kind of film I'm going to make. Yeah, I told, I know, memo, I told you about, for 
はあの小さな近所で<笑>そういう世界はこんなようなものであるとか、えー、いくつかのモチーフをいくつかのモチーフをあの埋めて書きますでそれを彼に渡して彼が自由に作曲をするんですでそのイメージアルバムと私たちが呼んでいますがとにかく映画の音楽としてではなくてイメージのアルバムとしてまず最初に作ります Uh, I give uh, uh, Mr. Hisaishi uh, some notes uh, regarding,、um, for example, that Ponyo is a small goldfish,、uh, what kind of world、uh, she lives in, and I give him uh, uh, indications of what kind of motifs I would like to have in the film.、Uh, then he composes、uh, the music as he uh, sees uh, fit in a free way.、Uh, and then、uh, he Makes an,、uh, what we call an image album、uh, of the entire、uh, music that's going to be in the film. It, we don't necessarily use all of that music,、uh, but it's the music、uh, that he imagines would be best fitting for this story. So, the film is a little bit of a story. The film is a little bit of a story. The film is a little bit of a story. The film is a little bit of a story. The film is a little bit of a あるいは大きなアレンジをしたり、突然彼が私の書いたメモを歌にしてしまったりとか、いろいろなことが起こりながら、あの映画の方がきちんとまとまっていくんです。And then as the、uh, story develops and、uh, gets farther on into the production process,、uh, we use、uh, we discuss more specific uses of his uh, music. Uh, at some points、uh, we would use it, the music. Sometimes we don't use the music.